another noisy, busy day at the studio, so I thought I'd just do this video here at home where it's a little quieter. Go back and look at the spiral musculature and how we lengthen the spiral line, or also the video that I did on how to get the upper back and the arms to relate the at-home program for the frame. You can also look at the one that we worked on, the, the shape of the upper body, talking about keeping the axis of the standing line and moving the head, trying to feel that the head is moving away from the shoulder. What I want to do today is go over that briefly and then apply it to what we were working on in the studio today in the tango with the back corte, which could be any corte where there's a lot of problems with the man tilting and letting his axis line move to the left as he tries to pull his head to the left. So we need to get control over the shoulder and learn how to unlock the shoulder. So I want to use the chair again because we can use this as a boundary. You can also do this lying on the floor. As long as you have something to give you information, it's very difficult for us to find the muscles that we need not only to hold the frame but to unlock it when the lady needs to shape. If you take the hand off of her back or give her more of the arm, she won't shape because she'll feel insecure that you've left her go. So we have to provide that boundary, but what we do have to learn how to do is move the right shoulder away from the right hand. And this is crucial for the man to keep this space open. This is always the problem we have with our men. That being said, the girls don't get off easily. They have to be able to unlock both shoulders depending on what we're doing in the frame. So often the ladies will let the right shoulder come forward. And now the right arm is going behind the back. So I'm just going to put my back against the chair, roll the shoulders a few times. And what we want to feel is that this part of the shoulder doesn't come off of the chair when we turn our head or when we dynamically pull the head slightly to the left. So we don't want the head to tilt or for the head to take the shoulder along. If you look at the video, we talked about the spiral musculature. I'm actually lengthening the spiral line through rotation. We might feel resistance within the structure. So turning the head to the left, keeping a strong vertical line, not tilting the head, not pulling it this way. Or in some cases, our head will be less rotated to the left, but vertically and feeling again the axis is being kept intact through the shoulder. So we put our frame up and then we have to do a rotation to the right as we would do in the back corte. And we also want the lady to shape. There will be a slight change in my hand as well. But I'm going to feel this opposition here that as I rotate to the, the right, that my right shoulder is pinning down and it's moving away from the right hand. The head is turning to the left. So if I were on the, the lady's end, as I go into my corte, I'm going to be careful there not to pull. I have to also unlock my right shoulder and take the head and neck back. So turning this too much or turning it the opposite way. So again, I'm using the chair here as the man to give me something to feel and I could do it on either side with the lady rotating her head and keeping the shoulder line intact. So if you're doing rowing exercises, that's good to develop the muscles that we need some of the better exercises are the ones that I did before in the video on the floor where you're keeping the shoulder line and the rib cage anchor down and taking the arms over the head to unlock this joint and learn to keep the shoulder line open while the arms are moving. And that could be compared to when we practice keeping our torso integrated and our legs moving from the The way that we're trunks. talking about separating the limbs from the trunk, this would also go to the legs and the hips where we need to keep the integration 
of the trunk and the torso stable and move from the hip joint. So it's the same with the shoulder line, but we need to be able to keep the integrity again of the way the trunk is moving. And when we need to move the limbs somewhat separately and also in a way that's hidden because we don't see it when we're in closed dance position, we don't see the release. We just see the result that if we don't do it, we take our partner with us or our shoulder with our hand into bad positions. So there's a lot of movement in the frame in order to keep the frame looking. Let's stable. take a look now at the back corte. And the back corte could simply be danced with that shoulder lead and then moving back into the closed finish. Or we can dance it with a right turn that we like to do competitively. So in either case, there can be a tendency for the man to become, once again, a problem of tango too much to the right side, particularly turn. You can see there that I'm doing my turn through my legs and feet and hips and allowing my right shoulder to move with my hips. But if I take the arm with me, I will pull my lady. So this is just one example of many where we have to feel still provide the boundary for the lady. We encourage her shaping by the way we use the hand, but we'll feel the unlocking of the right shoulder. It feels as it continues to move back. So that's what we get many times from the man turning to the left or turning into the shoulder or not turning at all and just holding the, the shape. So beginning my turn, and even now I'm already beginning to feel that my right shoulder is starting to move away as my weight moves back. The lady can feel that I have support for her, but she can feel her own legs and feet preparing the movement. And then we draw our, our head away. Now I'm being careful here not to tilt. This is another common problem for the men. You keep that axis line straight. I feel it straight on the right side. So again, I'm extending my spiral line by pulling the neck and the head to the left as the shoulder moves to the right. And that's better understood if you look at the video on the spiral line and the spiral musculature. The better you understand that, you can feel which muscles are opposing one another. So for the lady, as she goes into the corte, as I was saying there in the chair, she needs to also unlock her right shoulder so that she doesn't pull the man's left arm forward. This happens many times. Either the man will give the left arm or the woman will pull it by keeping her shoulder line too tight. So as I'm going into the corte and feeding my base forward and keeping my back moving, we'll go into this oppositional spiral as my left thigh and left hip continue to dance towards the man. In the neck and the head, we get a strong leftward rotation and also an increase in the curve. As I'm doing that, it's very important to keep that shoulder line and the line of my arms with the man and not pull, but unlocking my right shoulder and same thing here, I'm allowing for space between my hand and my left shoulder. We get the man to release his right shoulder, but the woman is hooked on, which often is a case in tango. She has her hand behind and locks it up. Now she'll get into a position where she's fighting her own shoulder, and the man's right shoulder will be pulled forward. So it's something that we need to do as a team is be able to unlock the shoulders in a way that's invisible to the shape of the frame. So today we looked at the back corte as our example of unlocking shoulders and trying to keep the, the frame or the hands in space with our partner very stable, but how we may have to use other articulations for the body. So the back corte is only one of many. Every time that we're rotating and we have a shape and the lady is expected to have more space, we have to learn how to do that. So there's many, many examples, that's just one 
that we'll use for today, but apply the same thing to the forte and the swing dance, hover forte, um, oversways. This adjustment that is being made through the shoulders in relation to the, the hands and the arms is happening throughout dancing because even in closed position, we have different types of rotation that take place between the partners where one hip or the other may come closer, one side may come closer. We'll go from to the closed position to the thromanon position. And any of those positions can be overdone if the shoulder line becomes too loose. So just that one example today, but apply that wherever you can find it.